Okay, thanks a lot, Carl, for your kind introduction. It's a pleasure for me to speak to you today. And um, yeah, so it's uh, always difficult to make the right selection, which is the right topic to be presented to such an audience. Um, but uh, yeah, I selected um, innovative uh, solutions for um, our foundry applications. And um, so I will differentiate between melting furnaces and holding transport and pouring furnaces. So, but before coming to our first topic, I would like to shortly introduce um, what Calderis is offering, what we bring to, to our community and the foundry business. And it is mainly about highest safety standards. So safety, green solutions, that is what is key for Calderis and that is what we are offering. We are offering a complete product and service with local expertise for the foundry industry. And uh, as already said, the best choice is to make a green solution without any dangerous substances inside our products. So we, uh, I need to clear my screen a little bit. Sorry, now it's easier for me to see everything. So yeah, so um, it is mainly about melting solutions and molding solutions. That is what Calderis is offering. And uh, when it comes to melting solutions, so all is about refractories, melt additives, accessories, and equipment. We are offering design, installation, and all other services which are related to refractories for foundries. Also, when it comes to slack coagulation, so we are offering a, a special product which is available on our portfolio. On the other side, the molding solutions, all that is about green molding sand additives, core sand additives. We are offering product analysis and uh, of course the consulting, including all the log logistic services which are needed for that kind of business. Can't move forward. Loading takes some time. Sorry for this. Jerk, if it will help you come out of presenter mode and just run it as the uh, the normal setup screen, or if you want to switch and run the PDF file, that would work as well. Yeah, nothing is moving, but okay, now it. Okay, so here it goes. Um, I will come back. Okay, yes, so. Sorry for that, but maybe the, the line is a little bit too weak. Okay, so when it comes now to the melting, so I would like to speak about uh, innovative boron free solutions for the lining of coreless induction furnaces. Later on, I will speak about innovative soil gel castable solutions, which are yeah, applicable for iron and non ferrous applications. And finally, about energy savings through intelligent furnace insulation technologies. Um, when it comes to our quartzite based dry materials, these are yeah key product this is a key product for the lining of coreless induction furnaces and you have already seen in the video a lot about our mine in Ormol and um, where we are sourcing our quartzite microcrystalline quartzite and these um, Quartzite products are mainly 
um, consisting of a certain amount of Sinta agent, which is boron oxide. Boron oxide is the most commonly used Sinta agent. It has a lot of advantages. It is strong and creates a robust Sinta layer in the front of the lining, here on the right side, a semi-sintered layer and a loose powder zone on the rear side, which is important for safety. However, boron oxide and boric acid um, are environmentally critically and uh, there are some health concerns and a growing number of countries are banning the usage of uh, burn so that we already decided some years back to offer a burn free silica mix solution to our customer and this mainly to protect our own workers but also our customers and um, the challenge of course was to find the right Sinta agent, which gives comparable characteristics like what boron oxide and boric acid is giving. So we have done plenty of R&D work um, to find the right boron-free solution. And some years back, so we were successful and uh, have found a boron-free binder and uh, have created a new uh, mix of products um, we call it silica mix e15 bf bf stands for burn free and it fits to temperatures in the range of 1480 to 1550 degrees c so that is mainly the major application temperature for iron foundries and um, this um, product range uh, is used um, in some foundries already successfully Nevertheless, the burn free solution has some, some constraints. One problem is that the strength sometimes in the front layer is not high enough so that we were forced to develop, to develop an additional range uh, based on large grain silica mix and uh, a special um, product which is for the bottom of the furnace. So, for the push out system, it is needed that you are having a strong bottom which creates enough strength during the push out so that uh, you can easily do the push out. I would like to start with the definition of the furnace where um, the initial tests of the boron free product had been made. That is a three ton coilless induction furnace. Um, medium frequency 1.8 megahertz uh, megawatt and um, it is uh, for gray iron and ductile base iron typically melting in that range of temperature between 1460 and 1520 and the special situation here is that it is cooling down every night and uh, started up with a cold start every day which means a lot of thermal shock cycling and uh, that is really the challenge and um, yeah the burn free solution silica mix e15 bf um, is really delivering the right pro product characteristic for that kind of furnace and on the next slide you can see after usage of three months and 289 heats how that lining looks like so that is the wrecking situation now here so the furnace lining is pushed out with the cylinder into a horizontal position and you can see a very nice sinter layer a crucible more or less really a crucible which is really stable um, and on the rear side you can see a loose powder zone which is completely loose all around around the, the lining and it is falling apart during the wrecking nowhere you were able to find any iron tongue or iron penetration or whatever not even here in the upper part what typically is a weak part of the furnace so a, a perfect um, result uh, just the push out um, here area the bottom always had to be done with a burn containing product so that we really were forced to look for an alternative solution with enough strength. And that is 
what I would like to describe to you during the coming slides. But before that, I want to share a photo with you where you can see that crucible out of boron free silica mix after the wrecking um, inside the dumping area. It had been transported with a forklift and it was um, very rudely pushed into the dumping area and still you can see a crucible which has sufficient strength and uh, the loose powder yeah you can see falling apart and uh, at the end you are having more or less two areas a strong sinter layer and a loose powder zone the intermediate area the semi sintered area what you are knowing from our burn containing products that is not any longer present here and that is not really needed so the loose powder zone gives the flexibility which is needed for furnaces which are operated in a one shift mode with a lot of thermal shock and here the loose powder zone really guarantees a free movement of the lining of the crucible inside the furnace now coming to the development of the LGS product that means the large grain silica mix containing boron free silica mix E15BF so that is what we are currently just deliver in 250 kilogram big bags not in small bags but um, these 250 kilogram big bags are possibly even more handy than all the small bags the installation in the first test had been done again with a burn containing product um, but all the following tests had been done with uh, LGS rigid material which contains um, a special amount of boron free binder and which gives excellent results I've taken just that photo for explanation how it is done so it is a typical installation like for every silica mix um, combifoil or mica is used for the lining of the furnace for the insulation and then the bottom is filled and compacted for 12 minutes with the bottom compactor after that the steel mold the former is put into the furnace and the resulting wall thickness is 100 millimeter so that is a very typical wall thickness for a three ton coalesce induction furnace then during the wall lining so it is recommended to use a flat um, um, wooden plate so um, to empty the big bags directly on top of that plate alternatively you can directly fill it of course also in the wall gap but um, it's common to to put it in the middle of the furnace and then to push with your hands the material into the wall here you can see the large grains which are inside that product so the grains are up to 20 times 40 millimeters so relatively large and you might be shocked when you are seeing that grains but uh, the performance is really nice so then you can see when the wall is filled up large grains are uh, obvious inside the lining the vibration is exactly the same like what you are used to with standard grain size products either boron containing or boron free containing products and um, in that case it was six times two minutes each 100 millimeters starting of course in the bottom area and then up to the top so then the capping can be made either out of a plastic material like shown here alternatively also a castable can be used or alternatively also the material which is used for the bottom which contains some more binder in the capping area a higher amount of binder is really recommended to get enough strength because that area is above the bath level and typically the sintering is not as good as it is done within the bath level area so sintering is done with um, inductively with nice 
solid rust-free oil-free steel scrap as it should be here you can see some starting blocks and returns and uh, inductive sintering is done with 100 kelvin per hour up to 1000 degrees then holding for one or two hours and after that uh, a melting down process is starting then a liquid sintering at Six, uh, at roughly 1300 and, uh, 1530 degrees for one hour is done before the furnace is capped. And uh, then you will see that there is a slightly rougher surface. That is because of the large grains. So the surface is not that smooth like what you are uh, used to when having small grain size. Um, but all the rest looks more or less like what you are um, well aware of and then of course um, the furnace is uh, during that test had been um, visually inspected all the time so the the foundry men of course were interested about the performance and they looked every day very carefully into the furnace and made photos and so on so that was the appearance after the first day then after i don't know exactly six weeks it was 83 heats it looked still excellent and then finally after 3.5 months and 291 heats and 80 thermal cycles um, the furnace has been wrecked and evaluated so during all 3.5 months no problems at all had been observed during the operation so just for reminder a comparison between the first day and the last day after 290 heats of course you will find some more slack stickings in that middle area of the furnace then the racking started from the top to the bottom and the lining thickness has been evaluated at 360 degrees set um, around uh, so that you we were able to see what is the remaining wall thickness in every area and um, it was obvious that underneath the spout area that was the weakest area roughly 300 millimeters below the spout there was a remaining wall thickness of four centimeters which was the lowest thickness all the rest had been uh, uh, showed a remaining wall thickness of around eight centimeters so during the wrecking we had exactly the same appearance like we had what we know with our standard grain size barn free solutions again here a very strong center layer and uh, you can see the larger grains here and additionally to that the typical loose powder zone so again here a very strong area and a loose area grain size um, well, which is obviously really large and coarse so then during the transport again a very stable behavior uh, it is more or less a, a, a crucible which has been produced by by the cordless induction furnace so to to summarize on that so with with that large grain silica mix burn free um, it was possible to reach nearly 300 heats and uh, that solution is uh, now used by that customer where we did the initial tests in all four furnaces they are operating three tons and six ton quality induction furnaces and in average the lifetime is 15 percent higher than compared to standard boron free solutions so they are using just boron free solutions they are not using any longer any boron containing silica mix and they are totally happy with that solution so what is important to mention that um, with the large grain silica mix containing product um, it was obvious that the growth of the lining was less in comparison to the standard grain size and uh, yeah even 
even um, the, the uh, Q15, which contains fused silica to together with burn, is showing a larger growth expansion in comparison to the burn free solution. So, yeah, all in all, no cracks, nothing during the entire life. And um, yeah, for for the bottom and for the capping area, the rigid material is a good solution. And um, yeah, the customer now is completely happy with that solution and is um, happy to continue with this product. So to to, to summarize on on the burn free solution, it's eco friendly. It shows an excellent lining life, which is comparable to fused silica mix containing products. Um, it's perfect for one shift mode. And yeah, so it's a strong front layer, a soft rear lining, and nothing in between. And that's good. Then coming to um, the pouring furnaces and uh, transport, which means uh, ladle applications. Here I would like to speak about innovative soil gel castable solutions for iron and non-ferrous applications. Um, a soil gel castable um, is based on a formation of non-metallic anorganic products from colloidal dispersion. Um, this is completely cement free and uh, that gives um, some really significant advantages concerning uh, strength and concerning heating speed. So the drying time is significantly reduced against cement uh, castables or cement containing castables. So that more and more people are asking for that kind of solution. And we have developed um, already some, some time back solutions for ladles, pouring furnaces, and holding furnaces. And this one for iron, non-ferrous, copper-based, and alumina, al aluminum um, contacts. So the soil gel binder gives, the gives um, a significantly higher water emission rate Looking here to the blue curve, um, that is the, the emitted um, water value against the time. And you can see that it is much higher and faster against cement bonded castables, um, which gives the advantage of the drying time. And when it comes to refractoriness, you can see that uh, the blue curve, that is a permanent linear change as a function of uh, the temperature that a soil gel castable gives a much higher stability at higher temperature. So the refractoriness is significantly higher against standard, um, here the black one, ultra low cement castables and also against our QD range, the quick dry range. So the advantage of the soil gel bonding is no pre-drying or curing is needed. That means after the unmolding process, you can directly start the drying process. It is easy to dry. So because no crystalline water is inside, no bonded water. So an easy dehydration is possible and the steam pressure is low, which means we are having a lower cracking tendency. Um, it is also important to mention that the influence of the ambient temperature is significantly reduced. So that means for a cement bonded castable, you need to ensure that during the setting, the temperature is minimum five degrees Celsius. And here also the soil gel bonding gives some advantages because we can really need, uh, nearly reach the frost freezing point, but we should not really touch the freezing point. That is important because also the binder should not be frozen. But beside that, it's really robust. And uh, the higher refractoriness in comparison to the cement bonded castables 
gives at the end a longer lifetime of our products in, in most of the applications. Um, yeah, we are having a good and improved corrosion resistance and due to the to second component, we have an enlarged shelf life, um, which is 18 months. The disadvantage or constraint uh, constraint is that the binder should not be frosted. So that means the binder, which is delivered together with the dry material, has to be transported and stored in a frost-free area. When it comes to the mixing and installation, so that is a little bit more complicated because you need to be very careful um, during the mixing. You need to be quick and fast and uh, you need to be aware that the setting of the product is relatively fast which means that the unmolding process can be done relatively fast but also the cleaning of the mixer and the hoses at the end needs to be done very fast and shortly after the mixing has been ended otherwise you are getting a lot of trouble when cleaning your mixer Coming to a ladle product, so a standard product for ladles is cement bonded Caldecast LX58. Calde Solcast M60, that is a comparable Solcast solution, cement free. It contains also around 60% of alumina, like our bestseller Caldecast LX58. And uh, you can see that the corrosion resistance is already improved against a low cement castable and at the end also the performance is better. What I would like to prove with an example of one ladle, it's a medium sized ladle in an iron foundry, typical lining setup, a steel former and a steel case. The product itself, it's Caldesolcast M60 2CP delivered in dry conditions in bags. And um, it is uh, worth to be mentioned that the density of the binder is not at one kilogram per liter, but at 1.3 kilogram per liter, which means, so we are forced to give two different binder level amounts, one in liter per kilogram and one in kilogram per kilo per, per bag. So that is important during the installation to be considered otherwise you might face um, some mismatch when adding the amount of liquid. The binder is delivered either in that 200 liter drum, it can also be delivered in IBC containers or in very small batches depending on which size of uh, lining you are planning to do. So it is ready to be used, there's no mixing needed. And the mixing is done in a standard pedal mixer. And when the binder level is correctly adapted, then then um, the surface of the castable should like uh, should look like this surface appearance. So there should be no bleeding of the binder. And here in that case, it's it's really perfectly adapted. And after some minutes, or depending on <laughs> the size of the of the mixer. So the lining is uh, finished and uh, already after roughly 30 minutes, the, the castable starts to set so that after roughly one hour, you can unmold your ladle. And the appearance is really nice. So it's a totally smooth surface. And uh, yeah, after that, the drying starts and the drying, of that kind of ladle can be done within roughly one shift. So if you are pushing really hard, you can do it even faster. But uh, in that case, so at the beginning, you should do it a little bit more carefully, but then between um, 50 and 200 degrees Celsius, you can heat up with 70 to 80 degrees Celsius per hour. Then a short holding period is recommended. And then within three hours, you can heat up up to 1000 degrees Celsius, where you should hold it again for 
maybe one, two, three hours, depending on how much energy you want to bring into the lining. And after that, you can start your production process. So that's relatively, that's a relatively short turnaround time. And then after, in that case, in that exam, example, the usage had been really 24 seven for transport and treatment. And um, during the full operation time of eight weeks, no maintenance except some slack removal had been done, but no repair and no problems uh, have been seen. And um, after eight weeks, so we decided to stop the usage of the ladle and just check and inspect what is the lining ap appearance. And it was really perfect. Um, so there was um, nearly the full wall thickness remaining. So yeah, nevertheless, we decided to completely wreck the lining after the first inspection. And yeah, the customer also is very happy and is now lining all treatment ladles with that Caldesolcast M60. Then coming to a high-end castable based on tabula alumina. That's a um, product also based on Caldes Sol cast technology. And this product typically is used in pouring furnaces and channel holders. I know that in, in UK, there are not too many <laughs> channel holders left, but nevertheless, uh, I would like to mention that um, this high-end product, which is also used in pouring furnaces, is really delivering uh, excellent results. So we have done a one-to-one -one test in a 100-ton channel holder. Um, a test and comparison between Caldecast UT94, which is an ultra low cement castable, our, our best selling product for channel and pouring furnaces. And we have compared that with the sole cast version of this product. And we have directly reached a life, increased lifetime of roughly 30%. And based on that result, one of our customer uh, just in August, six weeks ago decided to make the first complete lining of a 100 ton channel holder um, with this Caldesolcast T95. So in total, we have installed 37 tons of Caldesolcast T95 within roughly three hours. So we have been using two one ton pump mixers and due to a perfect uh, preparation of the work, so it was possible really to do the lining within three hours. And uh, yeah, St um, drying of that furnace took roughly five days. And uh, all together after 12, 12 days, if I remember correctly, the full furnace was back to operation. And uh, yeah, has, customer is completely happy with that. It was a quite difficult decision to, yeah, to, to make that kind of lining because the setting of that product is relatively fast and there's always a risk that you are not um, manage, that you are not able to manage a fast installation process. So there should be really no interruption. Otherwise, um, it is risky that the material starts to set and you will not be able to make a full hassle-free installation, but it, it went too well. And uh, yeah, so we are very proud uh, of having done that and having re received an excellent result so far. So let's see what will be the fur uh, further performance. But um, so I'm very optimistic that the product will outperform our Caldecast UT94 which had been used in that furnace for already now 15 years, year by year. And the last lining of Caldecast UT94 resulted in a lifetime of five years and a total throughput of 700,000 tons. So now the customer expects a little bit more, but we will see, hopefully not before five years. Now coming to um, non-ferrous 
applications. Here it is a, a copper based um, application. So for copper applications, we are using uh, products which are containing silicon, car silicon carbide and zircon. In that case, it is Caldosol Cast A50SZ. And um, so, yeah, here we are having again a, a three or four layer lining concept insulation, then a, a, a brick, firelight bricks then uh, shamot bricks and then the front lining is made out of that castable. Inductor is lined with silicamix BCU7. Also here we are using 7% uh, of silicon carbide which typically gives the best results. Um, so just some other details about this product. So again uh, dry material, 18 months uh, shelf life, and the lining again had been prepared very well. So here you can see the former and that is the furnace itself. Mixing is done with a 300, uh, 100 kilogram, no, I think it was a 300 kilogram mixer. And uh, so mixing between the dry material and the binder is done here in that mixer and then directly discharged into the former. And after some time, I think it was one or two hours, so the lining was completed. And the, the drying started. And to compare it, that is the standard drying curve, which has been used before with a conventional Caldecast uh, LTLA50SZ. And when it comes to the soil gel, solution so altogether 54 hours have been saved so that's of course a big advantage and the furnace is already in operation for nearly two years without any problem so last but not least i would like to to share some results um, concerning um, some solutions for energy savings by improved insulation technologies. Here is one case, um, an iron channel holder, but that is valid as well for any kind of pouring furnace. So the lining or design principle is that the solidus of the metal should be inside the safety lining. So that means when it comes to iron applications or gray iron applications, the solid dose is at 1150 degrees Celsius. So that the design has to be done um, that the solid dose should be here somewhere inside the safety lining. And that is an argument that we are not able to make in improved insulations or um, we inside the bath level here we need to ensure that inside the bath level we are always following that design principle that means our options of improving the insulation inside the bath level is limited so that we have to concentrate on the areas above the bath level which means in the cone area and in the cover area and here for a channel holder, you can see that cone area and the cover, the bath level is here at that level. That means we can optimize in that area. And later on, you will see what we have done, but um, already to tell you. So we have reached a temperature reduction of 60 degrees Celsius in the cover and roughly 30 degrees here in the cone area. Here you can see the conventional lining and the improved lining. The conventional lining is ceramic fiberboard, then a gunning mix made based on a medium weight um, gunning mix, then a 
casting uh, a gunning mix based on um, dense material in that case it's bauxite and the front lining is a castable which is cast here on the improved proved version so we are using a bubble alumina product together with some um, microporous boards and that is a high-end gunning material which is gunned and shot against that cone area and then the castable the front lining is directly cast in front of that for the cover so the conventional lining is a ceramic fiber board the improved version is a micro porous board then the second layer is the insulation based on standard medium uh, weight gunning product and the improved version is the xl 140 that means extra light up to a temperature of 1400 degrees celsius and the front lining for both cases is the same so here uh, we are not using different products just the ceramic the insulation is changed so comparing both lining technologies so you can see that is a standard conventional temperature profile 180 degrees and the improved version is 150 degrees and the cone area typically 265 degrees and the improved version is showing 205 degrees so that uh, installation had been done some years back at george fisher in singen and altogether the customer tracked the performance of the furnace over one year and measured the energy consumption and the savings had been 2.44 kilowatt hours per ton of liquid metal stored in that furnace so altogether over one year several ten thousand of euros energy costs had been saved by george fisher and um, yeah that concept now is applied also to other furnaces um, for instance here that is a brass pouring furnace where we are using also microporous boards um, with big success at the beginning it was a question if for press pour furnaces a microporous board is the right solution um, but we have applied that now for several furnaces and uh, it is no problem concerning the pressurization so it works very good and um, the insulation is significantly improved energy losses are reduced and another furnace is a typical abp occ 20.4 furnace for copper applications and also here we have applied microporous applications and we have optimized by using the best lining design the energy consumption by seven kilowatt in total and uh, so that means the total vessel has an energy loss of 23 kilowatt so and before it had been 30 kilowatt so that at the end gives a uh, significant saving savings for our customers and uh, yeah that is what uh, is more and more demanded by many foundries to optimize the furnace performance and the insulation characteristics so that's what i would like wanted to share with you thanks for listening and sorry for for the problems at the beginning Hi Dirk, that's absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, I've got to say um, it was uh, highly technical and um, a captivating presentation. Um, it's also great to see lots of uh, lots of uh, photos of, of applications as well. Um, being a foundryman, um, you know, I'm particularly interested in 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 the applications and never usually get the opportunity to see other families and what they're doing. So um, I think it's really special that you shared that with us. So, so thanks for that. Um, 
I guess it's um, you know it, it's it's interesting to see um, you know the, the concepts of um, furnace life uh, as being the main focus for many founders, and I'm, I'm guilty of that myself. I know that uh, you know it's the focus has been on how many melts the the, the furnace can do or the ladle can do, but there's a the much bigger focus now on on energy and energy conservation. So. Um, I know sort of companies like yourselves uh, are, are supporting foundries with with models and and simulating things before you, you can move to the to the sort of practical um, experiments or you know applications on the shop floor. So a couple of questions um, uh, we've got in the chat room. Um, I've got a couple of questions for you. Um, I guess from the the bore on free perspective. Um, that's quite interesting for foundries who try to produce perlitic, uh, perlitic irons. Uh, and there's one or two on on the on on this evening's um, presentation. Um, but the interesting thing for me was the difference in the uh, the grain size. So was was it is that really restricted to certain size um, melting furnaces or? Um, is there really no sort of restriction or relationship to the size of the furnace? Um, yeah, so we we do not know exactly what is the limit concerning the furnace size. So we have excellent results up to six ton furnaces. When it comes to larger furnaces, so we have started doing some tests. And just recently we have done a test in, in Turkey with a burn free large grain silica mix product um, but here's a in, in a it was 14 tons in total but here the performance was not what we expected to get so um here we need to further evaluate um, what is the furnace size which is still applicable for um, burn free solutions in combination with large grains and um, yeah we will see, but um, we are on the way and we will continue working on that. Sure. Great. Um, is there much impact on energy consumption as, in, as well? Is there any relationship between uh, this, this, the granulometry, the size and, and, and energy consumption? That is what has not been recorded. So it is possible, but I, I can't give you any numbers on that. But I expect because of the improved loose powder zone that there will be a difference in energy consumption, but it has not been registered. Okay, okay. Um, and is it just for sort of ferrous applications um, as well at the moment or? Yeah, the burn free is um, for ferrous applications. So we have not yet switched it to non-ferrous applications, but that has to come, of course. Yeah, for sure. Um, I've got a question in the uh, in the chat room. Um, do the new formulations make it easier to wreck linings, um, so there's less exposure to to vibration uh, for obviously the people doing the task? Yes, the wrecking is really much easier because it's very easy to 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 push out the lining, so you can do it very smoothly and uh, yes, hassle free. Really. Really nice, yeah. Great. I'm sure that'll be interesting for for a lot of uh, foundries. Um, another question I've got is, um, what is the realistic limit to any re energy reduction in the next few years? Uh, for which kind of furnace? Pouring furnaces. I guess for pouring furnaces, yeah, um, and possibly ladle refractories as well. I think that'd be quite interesting. Yeah, it's difficult to say what, what what is the limit. So as I try to explain, um, so the design principle does not allow to, to make it kind of teapot um, insulation, you know? So that is what we don't want to risk. And that is the reason why there are some certain limits. So you want to get a good performance, but at the same time, you want to have the best insulation. And that is always the balance. You need to find the right balance between performance and, and insulation. 
if you are ready to, to make some compromises um, on the performance, I'm relatively sure you can further improve the insulation, um, but then you need to accept that the lifetime will be reduced. Great. I don't know if that answers the question. Yeah, thanks, Dirk. Thank you. Um, I don't appear to have any more questions to uh, to ask right now. So um, I guess one question will be: um, Is the presentation available um, to everyone? And um, I guess that obviously we're recording the uh, presentation tonight, but I would point them towards um, getting in touch with um, myself. Uh, or Glenn Fletcher is, is you representing the UK uh, for calories and um, we can obviously share um, contact information um, through through the head office if uh, if anyone wants to to get a copy of tonight's presentation um, we so in, do, in the meantime, we, sorry, we, sorry. Do, we do have one more question that's come through um, that being um, do ladles still need vent holes typically five mil diameter with castable linings, or is this a hangover from fire brick linings? Yeah, that is not really needed. So um, if, it is, if it is a smaller ladle, so I don't see any need for, for that vent holes, but, but when it comes to larger ladles, um, so I, I still recommend to use it. For channel furnaces and pouring furnaces, for sure, it is a must when, when using different layers. And uh, when it comes to ladles, um, where you are having a mono layer, um, then the vent holes might be obsolete. Yeah, but for the moment they are used, still used. And one new one that's come in um, saying, uh, for crucibles for non-ferrous metals, have any of the sole gel products um, been developed for the non-ferrous side? Non-ferrous, you mean aluminium? I would presume so. It just says non-ferrous. Yeah, because so what I presented was a non-ferrous uh, at the end. That was um, copper and uh, brass. And yes, we do have sole gel solutions for all kind of um, non-ferrous applications, including aluminium. Thank you. Oh, thank, thanks, Dirk. Um, I'd like to ask uh, Mark Holliday uh, for a vote of thanks, please. Well, Dirk, uh, thanks very much for a very uh, interesting talk, and uh, you could tell that you're, um, you're, you know, you've you've earned your spurs, uh, showing us some uh, very interesting information. So, um, Dr. Holland, uh, on behalf of the IMC, the ICME, uh, West Midlands, Birmingham Comity Branch. I would like to propose a vote of confidence um, in our usual way, which is a, a round of applause. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you very much, Mark. <laughs> very kind of you.